everybody, welcome to Stitchmas Day 4. In today's video, I am going to be showing you how to make the cutest little dumpling pouch. Isn't it absolutely gorgeous? I have made this with velvet and... I've given it a tulip pink lining. Oh, isn't it gorgeous? Look at that lining. Oh, it's so gorgeous. So without further ado, let's get into the video. So the first thing you want to do is grab your pattern piece from the website. The details on how to get your pattern piece are in the description box below and that will be available for at least the next year. Um, this video is being published in December 2022, so it should be available at least until the following December. So go ahead, download your template piece. It does not going to cost you anything. It's completely free, but uh, you can really only make this with the template piece. So with that, we're going to cut two lining pieces. I would never normally use Tula pink fabric for lining, but on this occasion, I am going to. I know. So two out of lining. And what you want to do is with your velvet, which I'm using here, or which, whatever your outer fabric is, you want to back that with H250 interfacing and then cut two out of that. This is actually a beautiful purple colour. I don't think it really shows up very well on the camera, but it is a really gorgeous, dark, really royal purple. Gorgeous. So that's your first step. Get those pieces cut out. The second step, if I move those out of the way, I'm going to take one of my pieces. So this is one of my outer pieces. And I'm actually going to pop on this little motif. And I'm going to pop it on about an inch and a quarter, maybe an inch and a half down from the top of my pouch edge there. I'm going to use some of my fabric glue. Now, this is actually my, my refill. I can't find my pen. Uh, so I'm just going to be really careful and pop some of this on the back here. And just pop that now away so I'm not tempted to use it again. Pop that exactly where you want it. Now you can, of course, hand stitch this down. You could hot glue it down. I just happen to really like that fabric glue. So there it is, probably not positioned the best, but that'll be fine. Okay, so I've got a little motif on there just to have a little bit of interest. Okay, so now I've got one of my lining pieces. What I'm gonna do is get my quilter's tape. Now quilter's tape is a double-sided tape this is the quarter of an inch and you can use this to pop zips in, make it really easy for yourself. So I'm going to place my tape all around this edge here. So starting at this point here and just around the curved edge. I don't need to put anything on this edge. And then what I'm going to do is take off the paper backing. OK, there we go. And now I can just have a little fiddle. It's very sticky and we don't want to lose any of the stick. But now we're just about to get that on there so that this lays nice and flat. Next thing we're going to do is pop our zip on. Now we're going to actually split our zip in half. This zip is about 12 inches long. This is too long, but I much prefer to work with a too long zip. What we're going to do is place the zip around the edge here. Now, what I do recommend is that you just snip into the zip, not too far down, about, about a quarter of an inch down, and that's gonna help you lay your zip around this curve. So I'm just gonna snip along the length of this. That should do. And I'm gonna place this teeth side up. So these are the teeth and that's the side that the zip pull would be going on to. So I'm just gonna place this around this outside edge. And you can lift it up and reposition it. But place it round off that end there, do you see? And then the same on this side. And I'm just lining up the edge of the zip with the edge of the fabric. Okay, there we go. Lovely. Now we're going to place another row of quilters tape. 
over the top of that. Okay, so I've peeled off that tape and now I'm going to place my outer piece over the top. So I'm gonna line up the bottom corners first and press it down. And then I'm gonna line up that one. There we go. And then I'm just gonna press that down all the way around the edge. Just making sure that it fits around the edge like that. Lovely. It would help if this seat wasn't so squeaky. Let's just have a look, make sure that's okay. I'm just making sure the teeth are away from the edge so that I don't accidentally stitch them. I hope they're okay. So now I'm just going to give that a really good press down with my fingers to get both of those layers nice and secure on there. And now what we're going to do is stitch around this edge with our zipper foot. Okay, so taking my zipper foot, I'm just going to now stitch around this edge. And just feel there that the teeth aren't quite laying where they want them to. So I'm just going to go between the layers and just wiggle them out. There we go, that's better. Okay. And now that's stitched, let's go back to the mat. So we can trim this back. You can use your pinking shears if you would like to. I am just going to trim this to get rid of some of this bulk. And then just off the end there. I don't want to trim these two corner pieces. They're perfectly fine as they are. But if we turn this through, we can have a look to make sure we've caught all of our seam. And that our zip is sitting nicely. So you can push that zip out to the edge. You can see the zip around the front there. Looks really nice. And then the lining. So we're going to repeat that process, but I'm going to give this a good press first. Now I'm going to press this from the lining side and give it a bit of a steam. I'm not going to press that velvet. So I want to really make sure I do a good job pressing this lining. There we go. And then that should look really neat from the front isn't that gorgeous so repeat that for the second piece so that's the outer and the lining done what we're going to do now is attach them at the base so we want to pop our right sides together and we are going to stitch this base okay so what I've done is I've stitched the base and then I have zigzagged over it so it's given it like an overlocked edge now if you don't like that you can bind that bottom seam if you would prefer the next thing we're going to do is pop our zip pull on. So what we want to do is box off our corners. So we're going to open up our zip and we're going to turn this through. So we've got the lining out and then we are going to stitch these corners. So as you can see, that's our base. That's our side. We're just going to squeeze them together like this. So we've got a nice straight edge and then we're going to stitch across. Now I'm leaving this on all of this zip until I've stitched and then I'll cut it off. So I'm going to do that on that side and then I'm going to repeat that on the other side. So firstly, I'm going to stitch that at a quarter of an inch there or thereabouts with a back stitch straight across the back stitch. And then I'm going to trim off my zips and I'm going to trim everything so it's nice and neat. There we go. And now I'm going to do that zigzag stitch to overlock those seams. Again, if you don't like that finish, you can bind it and then I'm going to do the other side so the other side is a little bit trickier because your zip is not joined together but you can of course still do it you're just going to take it together like this and then you could pop a clip in to keep it together if you like but I'm just going to hold mine 
squeeze it down, straight stitch across, make sure everything is lined up, back stitch, straight across, and then I'm going to do the same again, just going to trim off the end of the zip, like that, and then go back to my zigzag stitch. Okay, so trim off your loose threads, make this look really neat inside, get rid of those, take a bit more time than I am, but you can see how lovely the overlocked edge is. So then I'm going to turn it through like this and poke out those corners and there I have got myself the cutest little pouch. If you want to pop zip tabs on there, if you want to pop little pulls on there, but this is a perfect little pouch to maybe gift some jewellery in and that's exactly what I'm going to do, pop some jewellery in it. But if we open it out, isn't it beautiful? That tulle lining just really makes this quite stunning. So there we are. I really hope you've enjoyed this project. That is Stitchmas Day 4 and I will see you for Stitchmas Day 5. Thanks everyone.